morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be. Today I'm going to do something a little different. Yep, that means no Dutch lesson and no keyboard cover. I'm actually going to do a review, and I'm going to do a different kind of review to the ones that you're normally used to. I have here my iPad Mini. Yes, you know, one of those really cool little thin, lightweight things that are made by Apple that some people call the giant uh, iPhone. I'm going to be doing a review of this today. But it's a review of different sorts. Nope, I'm not going to do a review of iOS 7. You guys can already go and look that up on the internet. I'm not going to tell you the specifications of the iPad and review it in that way because you can already go and look up that on the internet as well. I'm actually going to do an accessibility review. Why? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first reason being is because, I, yeah, I just don't see any of them online. And the second reason being is because I've been approached by a lot of people asking what the iPad's like, how do I use it, is it good for people who are visually impaired, is it good for people who are practically blind? Well, in my opinion, yes it is. I'm going to show you why. First of all, I need to explain about my own eyesight. My eyesight is very bad. I'm registered as being legally blind, although I do have some useful vision. In medical terms, I see 360 in my left eye and I see 160 in my right eye. That was measured about five, six years ago. Uh, in layman's terms, it basically means that what you guys see at 20 meters with my left eye, I see at 3 meters. What you guys see at 20 meters with your right eye, with my right eye, I see at 1 meter. Although, like I said, that was five or six years ago, the last time I had a proper eye test for that. And I believe that that's actually worse now than it used to be. I also have real trouble reading. Uh, for you guys, you can sit at a normal distance with your iPad like this and you can read. For me, if I want to read without any accessibility options turned on, my iPad has to be here or even here. It has to be pretty close to me for me to be able to read it. Also, daylight affects my vision. My vision gets worse if it's too bright outside. It's so normal daylight and sunlight limits my vision even more than it's already limited. So yeah, that's a little bit about my eyesight so that you can understand what I'm dealing with. Now I'm going to show you the accessibility options that you can have on an iPad which make it really really useful for a visually impaired or practically blind person. Or I've actually been told a completely blind person can use an iPad. So. I'm going to bring you in closer to my makeshift table here, which is actually a footstool, but okay. I'm going to bring you in closer and I'm going to let you see some of these accessibility options and how they work. Okay, so the first thing I suggest you do if you're visually impaired, or even if you're not visually impaired actually, is use your home screens to divide your apps up into different categories. So basically I have six or seven screens I think and I have basically a screen for admin, I have a screen for social media and uh, internet applications, I have a screen for games, a screen for watching TV and playing back music, so it's kind of TV apps, music apps and uh, there's a camera app and other stuff here as well. Uh, I have stuff for reading and I have stuff for the area of where I live so that I can get news from that area and I have stuff for traveling. That's the first thing that I actually did when I got the iPad was divided all the screens up into different categories. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do or want to do is if you're visually impaired is you're going to want to activate the um, the large text option which is the most simple accessibility thing that you can do. This one you cannot switch on and off. Once it's on, it stays on. But it just makes your text easy to read. So go into the settings option. Uh, in general, I think, and under accessibility somewhere, I'm reading upside down so, and I'm not close enough as I've just explained. So I can't point it out exactly. But somewhere on the uh, right hand side then is your accessibility menu and you'll be able to go into there and turn on the large text option and as you can see from the screen already the text is quite clear, quite bold and quite readable. Before I even go any further I can already, at the, the, the furthest distance away that my eyes can cope with I can already quite comfortably read this text. Now, one of the second things you'll need to do is activate the, the three click thing. Okay, so we're now in the accessibility options. 
uh, which is under general as I said and then on the right hand side it's about the fourth or fifth option down and it says accessibility if you then scroll all the way down to the bottom there's a thing called uh, activate home activation or something like that it's in Dutch so I don't know what the correct English translation is but it's the very last option in the list and it allows you to decide whether or not you by clicking the button three times you turn on zoom inverted colors or whatever you ask uh, which op whether it asks for which option you want to turn on you want to set that up to whichever your preference is I get my iPad to ask me what I want it to do because I like to use the zoom and the inverted colors options so that's the second thing you need to do okay once you have that set up you will then be able to access your preferred options from the home button so if I click on the home button and go back to home and do one two three clicks of the home button for me it brings up a menu and I can choose from zoom uh, sorry inverted colors zoom or voiceover in that order and I can just click one of them and then it switches for me so for example if I tap on the inverted colors now my screen is the other way which is actually really annoying for the home screen but if I open up an app such as Hootsuite. You can now see that Hootsuite is has a black background with white text, or is this Facebook? One of them. Anyway, you now see that the app. Oh, it's Facebook. You now see that the app has a black background with white text, which makes it much easier to um, access. And uh, yeah, it makes it for me much easier to read. Okay, so you were. Uh, you're interested in the inverted colors but that's only useful some of the time some of the things for example like let me just switch back so i can see what i'm doing with the home screen some of the things for example like the itunes store uh, is totally not accessible even with the um inverted colors switched on because some of the text and options are still gray especially when you click on an app for instance like pinterest here and the description at the top or underneath is, is gray text still on a really irritating black background so i want to turn on my zoom again i go into the, the click three times of the home button and i can click on zoom and now i can use my free fingers to scroll across the itunes store um, if I want to zoom in some more, you're supposed to double tap and pinch, but that's not working for me right now because I'm doing it upside down. Double tap and pinch will make allow you to zoom in and out even more, but I, can't, I've, I don't work a lot with this, so I can't get it to do what I want it to do. And then if you just want to, hopefully it's not downloading any apps right now, and then if you just want to scroll up and down a, a specific piece of text, you can just use your single finger to scroll up and down. If you want to use the whole screen, though, three fingers is what works. So that's another accessibility option. You can make it go bigger than what it is, but it's not doing that for me right now because I don't know how to use this function very good. Yeah, I'm awesome, I know. But you can choose how far you want it to zoom in or how far you want it to zoom out. Uh, or you can just go back to your three clicks on the home screen, use your three fingers to scroll, and then I can switch it out again. Okay, so I've just changed my options a little bit for you guys so that I can also show you another, a third accessibility option. So if I go one, two, three clicks on the home button again, look above the other two are now a third option which is voiceover. Now warning before I turn it on, it's going to talk in Dutch so you're not probably going to understand a word that it's saying. But I'm going to try and demonstrate it a little bit anyway. So we're going to tick on voiceover to make it talk. <laughs> I can basically now close my eyes and try and navigate this system without the use of having to look at the screen at all. Or at least that's what Apple says you can do. I don't use this option, I have no idea how it works. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be a new challenge for me too, so let me see what voiceover will do. If I tap on the screen, it's giving me an audio signal to say that I'm tapping. Uh, if I tap here, it's telling me that... It's telling me that I'm ticking on the clock and it's telling me that I have to double clap, tap on it to open it. So it's giving me feedback wherever I tap on the screen, for example, here. It's telling me, telling me that I'm ticking notes and again I have to tap double to open this application. So I'm not going to accidentally open an application unless I double tap on it. So I can literally close my eyes and put my fingers anywhere I want on the screen. Will it let me scroll over? 
How do I scroll from screen to screen? That I don't know. Okay. It will obviously take a lot more lessons for me to <laughs> for me to learn what it is that I'm doing. But let's open the settings. Installing them. Take the bomb to open them. Okay, so it's telling me I tapped on in installing them, which means settings in English, and it's telling me to double tap it to open it. So I'm opening the settings, them. and again I can't read now anyway because I'm looking upside down and I'm not close enough to the iPad. So let's see, see how good this works. Okay, so it's telling me I'm tapping on the message center button. Privacy. Oh. I'm not having I'm having difficulty understanding his voice, but okay. It's reading out the buttons that I'm touching. Oh. oh okay. And tapping the notes button. Oh. So I can basically tap anywhere on the screen and it's giving me feedback. Which is really awesome. And to turn him off Attention. The three clicks of the button, it's telling me that the accessibility options has popped up in the middle of the screen and I can now tap anywhere I want on the screen. It's telling me I've selected voiceover and I can... I think I turned it off. <laughs> I think I actually shut him up, yes I did. So that's awesome because it's giving me feedback of wherever I tap on the screen. So if I do lose more eyesight, which I believe I probably will in the future, I can still use my iPad. Something that you have to practice if you're completely blind and you don't have any sense of what's on your screen anyway, but it's doable. You just have to have a lot of patience so that you can learn it. So they are the three main accessibility options for your iPad. That's inverted colors. You have a uh, zoom option and you have voiceover option. So no matter how difficult you find it to see, whether you can see a l you just lost a little bit of sight or whether you can see nothing at all, you will be able to use this iPad. Now, my favorite, favorite, favorite function on the iPad which makes life even more useful is Siri. Why? Because it saves me from having to struggle with typing or seeing the screen when I'm in the middle of the street and I need to set myself a reminder for something. Okay, I have an iPad mini and it's not the 32 gigabyte version with uh, 3G capability built in, but I can link that to my phone. I don't need those capabilities. So if I want to go outside and still have internet on my iPad, I can do that by making my phone a Wi-Fi hotspot. And then I can use Siri, which is really easy to use. You just push and hold the home button. Hi Siri, what time is it? It's 15.05. It's five minutes past three. That's really nice to know. Thanks Siri. Uh, you can do a lot of really useful stuff with this. Uh, so if I have a lot of problems with memory, it helps me with my other disabilities as well as my visual impairment. Uh, let's see. Remind me to edit this video in 10 minutes time. Here's your reminder. Shall I create it? I can make Siri do pretty much whatever it is that I want to do, which saves me sometimes from having to see the screen. Send a message to Emily. Okay, I can send a message to Emily to for you. What would you like it to say? Hi, I'm demonstrating Siri to our YouTube viewers. Ready to send it? Send. Okay, I'll send your message. Okay, so this makes my life really, really, really useful because if I'm outside and I can't see what I'm doing, I can still communicate with people. And when Emily sends me a message back, which hopefully she will, uh, I can make Siri read it out to me. So even if I don't have voiceover switched on, if I don't have Zoom switched on, or if I don't have the inverted color switched on, I can still use some functions on my iPad, which is really cool. You see, she sent me a message. What was my last message? I found your most recent message from Emily did. It says, cool. See, I can have Siri. Would you like to reply? I can have Siri read and reply to messages, which is pretty awesome. Okay. 
So the last app that I want to show you, or the last thing that I want to show you, is pretty much owned to Dutch people. I live in the Netherlands, as you guys know, and uh, we have a subscription here to the Telegraph, which is a newspaper. So this has opened up my eyes to a lot of things that I couldn't do before. Never in my life have I ever been able to read a newspaper. With my subscription for the Telegraph, I can now read a newspaper. Uh, in the iPad, it's an app that you download or you download something. I didn't do it, Jesse set it up for me. And it goes through the kiosk, so you open the kiosk, you open the newspaper. We're going to download today's newspaper, which I haven't done yet, bad me. So we're going to download that right here. Uh, and then we should be able to read it. Yep, there we go. So, okay small newspaper print everybody know who is visually impaired or blind knows that just newspapers are really not in really not accessible in any way shape or form unless you have in the old days one of those great big closed circuit televisions with a camera where you could shove the newspaper underneath apple and the telegraph work really freaking well together okay first thing i can do is pinch and zoom no accessibility options I'm just pinching and zooming to make the newspaper really big and I can scroll across the screen to read it to see what the articles are. And say for example I want to read this article here, I don't know what it's about because I'm looking at it upside down so it might be something completely uninteresting, I don't know, but I want to read this article, I can tap on it. And it pops up a window where I can just have this one article open and I can read it. There are buttons below to increase or decrease the text size and I can use my inverted colours here to make it a little bit more readable for me. And if that wasn't enough, this little button down here in the middle which in Dutch says in how to for later, which means read the content, you can click and hopefully Eredivisie Plotora Toto door Valentijn Driesen. Zeist, woensdag. De Eredivisie voetbal komt vanwege de nucleaire top in Den Haag in maart een heel week in de stilte. De app is actually reading the content of the article to me. And that is built in with the app. I'm not using voiceover. I'm not using, okay, I am using other accessibility options, which we can turn off. We can turn off the inverted colors. No accessibility options anymore. But he is still reading this to me. This is inbuilt into the app. So for anybody with a visual impairment who has never read a newspaper before, go and get a telegraphic subscription. Please. Because it opens the world up to being able to use read a newspaper, which I have never ever been able to do before. And it is freaking amazing. So, if you're wondering if an iPad is a good thing to get as a visual impaired person i would say yes i would say it's absolutely awesome and in my personal opinion i don't know what i ever did without it and i never ever want to be without it ever again so i would like to thank you guys very much for watching uh i hope that this has helped you make a decision on whether or not you should buy an ipad especially as a visually impaired person if you have any questions feel free to ask down below in the comment uh, not in the comments, down below in the description are links to our website and our social media pages. So if you want to get in touch with me and you don't want to just leave a comment, come and find us on one of the, on our website or one of the social media pages and I will ask a question. For those of you who find it difficult to access the, the description down below, www.justconnect.eu is our website. And www.facebook.com slash justconnectteam is our Facebook page. We can be reached through there. I can be reached through there. Thank you guys very much for watching. As I said, I hope you found this video really useful. I know it's a bit long, but it's necessary to show you all of these awesome options in the iPad. Until next time, guys, be good. And if you can't be good, go buy an iPad and read a newspaper.